Hello everyone and welcome to another review. Today not from Frankfurt am Main, Germany. Today I'm in Gret, that's in the southern part of Europe. That's a big island which belongs to Greece. And I'm here for you together with my girlfriend to test the Canon RF 24 to 105 mm f4 lens. Uh, there is already a review about this lens on my channel. However, I decided to test this lens for traveling. So we brought this lens and two other lenses with us on holiday. And we will figure out if this lens suits you once you go on vacation. As I have already done a review of this lens and a comparison with the 70 to 200 millimeter, today it's just about whether this lens is worthwhile for your next holiday. So enjoy. If you're traveling, you like to have the best with you, but preferably with little weight. I had my small low pro backpack with me, including the EOS R5 and the two lenses. At 700 grams, the 24 to 105 mm is a super all-rounder, but unfortunately it got super expensive with almost 1500 bucks instead of 1200 bucks two years ago. In addition to dust and a splash water protection, the lens offers several rings. One programmable ring, for instance, to change the aperture, ISO, shutter speed or the focus field, one zoom ring and one for manual focusing. The focus ring moves very softly. On the side you can switch the image stabilizer on and off, which by the way compensates up to 5 stops. The other switch is for the outer focus. To protect the front element I recommend a 77mm filter. The link is listed in the video description. Personally I would worry less about chromatic aberrations and vignetting. There is no problem that cannot be solved quickly in Adobe Lightroom. You can find lots of sample images at the bottom of the video description. If you have a lot to do with photography, either professionally or privately, and are prepared to invest thousands of euros, you want to get sharp photos. The RF 24 to 105 mm is already extremely sharp at wide apertures and all focal lengths. Of course, you need to be able to rely on a good image stabilizer when using slow shutter speeds, driving, in a plane or in a boat. I tested the image stabilizer wherever I could and here is the outcome. Some of you may be wavering between the RF 24 to 70 mm and the RF 24 to 105 mm. Well, the 24 to 70 mm offers a 2.8 aperture but less focal length. The RF 24 to 105 mm has a slower aperture but more focal length. With a price difference of almost a thousand euro, you should think carefully about what you value more. Let me put it this way. For night shots, you should ideally have a tripod with you or a wall on which you can place the 24 to 105 mm. If you want a slightly better bokeh, you probably want to go for the 24 to 70 mm. But of course, you have to pay more. For the next trip, the 24 to 105 mm is, in my opinion, the better choice. Being more in the action sometimes brings more than a better bokeh. But I'm curious to hear what you have to say about it or whether you'd rather treat yourself to another all-rounder lens.
I'm so lonely. I think I'm crazy. Well, well, well. Quite a few of you may be still underestimating the video capabilities of the EOS R modules today. Whether it's C-Log, 4K, 8K or slow motion shooting, it brings the holiday back home. I shoot an enormous amount with my Canon EOS R5 and R6. Not in 8K but in 4K and now and then in C-Log. The manual focus allows you to capture detail shots without the focus jumping to give your holiday reportage the finishing touch. For portraits I would always prefer a faster aperture, but the bokeh is still impressive. The eye out of focus works reliable and quickly on my Canon EOS R5 and the more you zoom in, the nicer the bokeh. Besides the 24 to 105 mm, I also have the RF 14 to 35 mm for landscapes. But that doesn't mean that the 24 to 105 mm is unsuitable for that. For interiors, of course, less focal length makes more sense. But for most people, 24 mm should be enough. My tip to get more: shoot in portrait mode and compose the image series as a panorama in Adobe Lightroom. The closest focusing distance is unfortunately not fixed but starts at 45 cm. Actually good when it comes to close ups but it would be nice if the minimum focusing distance stayed the same. For vlogging, I would rather go for the 14 to 35 mm f4 lens, especially because with the Canon EOS R, you still have a huge crop factor in 4K. But if you have to, the 24 mm will do its job. Let's summarize. So if I had to choose an all-rounder for my travel today, I would go for the RF24-105 f4L lens. Robustly built, fast out of focus, compact, 
despite the extending zoom, but ideal for capturing most moments. I would wish for a Mark II version that it would stop extending, the minimum focusing distance would stay the same and we would go back to the old price. The last was more wishful thinking than realistic feedback. I like to have it with me for all kind of shoots and I really enjoy filming with this lens. Which is of course also super for interviews. Is it worth the 1450 euros? Do you have this lens yourself? Which lens do you always have on your camera? I am very curious about your feedback. If you would like to support my channel voluntarily, you are welcome to buy the memory card, the camera, the lens, my backpack or the tripod via the link in the video description. Feel free to follow me on Telegram and Instagram. All the best from Greece, enjoy your springtime and see you very soon. Tschüss!